Hello everyone. Um, I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about uh, the Brayden method. The Brayden method is a function of solving equations in zeros um, using the function of equation, or I guess the, the multiple sets of uh, equations that we have here. Um, it also applies as a like a pseudo Newton method to find some zeros, which is really great if you have a lot of nonlinear equations. It also makes use of something called a Jacobian. So, um, as we have here, or as shown here, x equals some number of iterative values between x1 and xk. The function of x equals some list of functions as f1 as a function of x1 through xk, f2 as a function of x1 through xk, fk as a function of f, or x1 through xk. So just any system of nonlinear equations is kind of what um, these two equations are kind of supposed to be telling us. So next we will be employing the use of a Jacobian, which I will denote as Jn. So this Jn as a function of xn minus x minus x n minus 1. So um, this is saying that we're taking the Jacobian of the function value at whatever we want minus the one before it. So if we get x2, so this would equal, or so at, at x2, this Jacobian of 2 is a function of x2 minus x2 minus 1, or simply wrote as 1. So I'm going to get rid of this real quick. Okay. I'm a little new to the drawing on the screen thing, so bear with me. There will be some relatively rough <laughs> handwriting. Okay, so um, now that we have this Jacobian function, we, we want to approximate it to one of our functions. So we're going to say that our Jacobian as a function of xn minus xn minus 1 is approximately equal to our function of x at n minus the function of x at n minus 1 essentially creating the iterative index for our Jacobian. So now that we uh, now that we're going to move on, we want our uh, so our function just to, to help kind of clarify this, our function at and our iterative x f of n function is equal to yeah uh, excuse me so our f of n function is just the simplified form of f of x of n. That's just simplification. We're just going to apply that. And then our delta x n is just that same iteration of x n minus x n uh, n minus one. So, and then. If we wanted to, to create, oh, we use the same. Delta f of n is the same as saying f of x n minus f as a function of x n minus 1. Okay, so now to, to simply clarify, this is all the things that we'll be talking about, or we'll be employing as a simplification. So. Uh, let's clean some stuff up here. Um, I'm going to get rid of what I have after, uh, give people some time, and then kind of erase all of what we have here. Appreciate your patience while you bear with me in learning and employing some new technology. Back to our pencil. 
Okay, so now that we have our function, or we're, we're going to keep our defined function values and we'll leave the clarifications. So now we're going to say that our Jacobian of n, or as a function of n, times change in x of n, which is how we approximated it before, written in our new language, is approximately equal to the change in f of n. So that's just our brand new way, or the, this is our way of saying the, the thing we said before, this um, Jacobian of n times the delta x sub n is approximately equal to the function of n. Okay, so now to, to apply this to our Newton method. So the Newton method, or Actually, we're not going to we're, we're not going to be doing the Newton method first. First, we'll actually be applying the finite difference approximation using the secant method from calculus. So, this is saying that the derivative of f as a function of x n equals is approximately equal to f as a function x n minus f as a function of x n minus 1 divided by x sub n minus x n minus 1. This is the secant method. Secant method. And we'll be combining this with the Newton method, which is x of n plus 1 equals x as a function of n minus f as a function of x sub n divided by derivative of f as a function of x n. This derivative function f or is uh, we'll actually be replacing that that with the Jacobian, which is another calculation method that is more finite that we can use in the in the code that we'll be discussing later. So this is ten ten ten. been off screen that oh, I'm hitting a dead zone that's weird things aren't loading for there we go it's just running a little slow there new method my chicken scratch so these are the two methods that we'll be employing to try to solve the function above this Jacobian of the day change in x of n the Jacobian is actually the function or the function of the derivative. So I will go in and I will erase what we or erase our methods after or, goodness gracious great balls of fire. That's a relatively old movie reference for some people, but um, uh, let it load. Um, she's been running a little slow. Not quite sure how to deal with it. Um, however, I will give it a second to pause so my computer can catch up. I can get all this erased, and um, I'm actually going to grab a charger too. All right, I'm back. Um, so now that we've kind of established all of our methods, especially with the secant method and the Newton method, um, we're going to actually apply the secant method to our uh, to our matrix or to our, our functions. So the the way that we're going to do this is I got my pencil up. The the Jacobian as a function of n equals the Jacobian of the previous, or Jn minus 1, 
plus the delta f of n, if you remember from our shorthand, minus the Jacobian of n minus 1 times delta x sub n. All of this is going to be over the ah, delta x of n squared. And then this is going to be the delta x n to the power of t. So this is going to be our, this is what is now, at, or this is what Broyden suggests as the use of the Jacobian matrix. So um, to try to help bring this, so this is the, the one form that we can use. And since this is um, a function of n, we can create an iterative process to run these calculations. But now we're going to uh, create this so we have a more optimized form using the Sherman-Morrison formula. The Sherman-Morrison formula is defined um, as an invertible square matrix. So the Sherman Morrison. So it is an invertible square matrix and is the, the result of the outer product of two vectors. We're going to call these vectors U and V. So now that we have these, these vectors, we're, we're going to plug it into the, the general. So A is going to be equal. Eraser. Uh, my eraser. Uh, I used the wrong symbol here. It is not that one. It is A is. all real numbers in a matrix or in an n by n matrix. So uv is our square matrix and a is the, the function of all real numbers in an n by n matrix. So um, we're going to write out the Sherman Morrison equation which is so a plus uv to the t to the negative first equals a to the negative first minus a to the negative first times uv to the t times a to the negative first divided by 1 plus u or v v to the t times a to the negative first, u. So this is the Sherman-Morrison formula, which, if you notice, is kind of similar to what we have above. And through this app, or through the the combination of the Sherman-Morrison and this Jacobian matrix, we're actually going to be able to complete or combine them to the Broyden method, and using this, create a much more simpler, much simpler. Um, iterable calculation that can be done with our code and gives us much, much more accurate and quick results. So we're using less CPU, which can be helpful when you're creating code hundreds and millions of lines long. So let me just erase all of what we have here. So now that we, we've defined the, the Sherman Morrison and gotten our, um, our, our new equation, we're going to 
So now we're going to, to minimize what is called the Fribonius norm. So minimization of J or the Jacobian of N minus the Jacobian of N minus one F. So yeah, this is or this will minimize our Fribonius norm. And then we're going to proceed towards the, the Newton equation, which this becomes X, or if you remember, so well, we're going to transform. So this becomes X of N minus one of X N minus Jacobian, or the inverse of the Jacobian at N times the function, the function, the function of X sub N. So using all of this, we'll create another equation. I'll zoom out a little bit so I can get a little bit more space. So using all of these, we're going to combine it all together to create the, or using this equation, the Fribonius norm and the sherman morrison formula to create the very, very long winded version of the Jacobian matrix or of the Broyden method, which will help us solve some equations. So we get to the J or the Jacobian of N to, or the inverse Jacobian of N. And this is going to be the, the Jacobian or the inverse Jacobian of N minus one plus, and then we're going to have our Delta X at, or at position N minus the inverse Jacobian at position N minus one times Delta function of N all over delta x to the t power of n times the Jacobian negative or the inverse Jacobian n minus one times the change of the function of n n and then all of this is multiplied by the delta x so raised to the t n zoom out once more because I never leave myself enough room of the Jaco or the inverse Jacobian of n minus one. So this this is the Broyden method of finding zeros Broyden method. So when finding more complex um, more complex roots to or roots to more lengthy and undefined or nonlinear equations in series of nonlinear equations, you can apply this formula, which I will show you in later videos on how to code and create in Python or Google Colab. Um, we'll be able to do this and solve some pretty, pretty neat equations. So um, uh, thank you for listening today, and I will uh, see you in the next video.